another recorded, this is a pre-recorded Top 10 United Players Weekly, um, where basically every week we go through um, what I feel are the best standout Manchester United before, uh, performances um, of the last week or so. So obviously, um, I posted a video last week. We had um, a few interesting picks, a few interesting entries. Um, there'll be some new entries coming into the fray here. Um, some um, new surprises. Um, but yeah, let's let's let, let's crack on. Let's go on. So if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter at We United X and uh, smash that notification button. Sorry about that for latest Manchester United news. So just as a recap to everyone who. Um, I put the link in the description for the previous video, but just as a recap for the previous top 10 players that entered the top 10 list last week, um, at number 10 was David De Gea, then you had Romero number 9, Matic number 8, Lindelof number 7, Luke Shaw number 6, Brandon Williams number 5, Rashford number 4, Bruno Fernandes at number 3, uh, Wan Bissaka at number 2, and Fred at number 1. So, without... Uh, Without any further ado, let's crack on to um, this week's top 10. Um, so number 10 is again David De Gea. Um, he retains the number 10 spot. I didn't feel like David De Gea <coughs> um, need to drop out of this list, if I'm honest. Um, he didn't really have to do that much against Chelsea. And obviously, he didn't play against Club Bruges in the week. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, by the law anyway, he didn't concede any goals. He was solid. Um, he did what he had to do. Um, so, as far as I'm concerned, David De Gea, he doesn't move up, um, but he doesn't drop out either. So, David De Gea at a at a number 10, I think, is is reasonable. Um, now, here's the new number 9, Brandon Williams. So, um, Romero actually drops out of this, um, because, partly because there's been a lot of, there were a lot of good performances um, over the last two games, especially the Chelsea game. Um, and Romero is just one of the casualties of dropping out of this top 10. Um, and also the fact that, like, frankly, like, uh, you know, he could have probably done better with that goal against Club Bruges. So Romero is is is, is out of this out of the top ten, um, and and Brandon Williams, who actually was fifth, actually drops to uh, number nine. So he still stays in. Um, I think he had a, had a decent performance against um, Chelsea. I don't think he had the best performance against Chelsea. I don't know whether some of this is the system that we're playing, the whole three at the back, wing back, three, five, two, whatever it is, which I don't like. Um, and it just seems, I think Luke Shaw works in it well, but I'm not sure whether Brandon Williams works in the system well. Um, but certainly against Club Bruges and one two games previously to that, um, well, I'd say certainly against Bruges, I don't think he, he, um, he had the best game, if I'm perfectly honest. And my concern with Brandon Williams is, first couple of games, he, he was very, very good. Um, and like any youth player, you know, you get that sort of issue of inconsistency, which I think Brandon Williams is starting to potentially get into. There's also the idea of like rest and what have you. So, you know, I think he's, he's got very good potential. And certainly now what, that you have Luke Sean, Brandon Williams competing for what I think should be the same spot at left back. Um, they should hopefully sharp sharpen one another you know to, to, to get better basically um we don't need to go out in the transfer market for another left back um i just think right now luke shaw probably just ed out edges brandon williams williams right now and um, but that's no slight to brandon williams. he's a young player and he deserves our full backing um so at number eight is a harry Maguire. harry Maguire. so previously this is another new entry in, in, into this list actually last week at number eight was was Nemanja Matic, but Harry Maguire comes into this list um, at number eight. Um, you know, I say I had my criticism of Harry Maguire for quite a bit this this season. Um, increasingly now, I am thinking that possibly the Harry Maguire um, Bayi partnership is probably the best one to go forward potentially. Um, It'll be interesting because um, because obviously Manchester United will be playing tomorrow because it's going out on Saturday, Saturday evening. So you'll be hearing this on Saturday evening about half past seven, eight o'clock UK time. Um, so tomorrow, for tomorrow's game, I'd be interested to see what centre-back pairing Solskjaer will pick, whether he'll go for Bailly and Maguire or whether he will, um, whether he will uh, stick with Maguire Lindelof. I can't see... Maguire and Lindelof played in the Europa on Thursday. He's got to switch it up, and I think the buyer should definitely come in. Um, Maguire, going to Maguire, um, 
there were few. I think he, he, there were few issues again on again Club Rouge, but I think he is in this position because um, on Monday against Chelsea, um, although I didn't think it was the best defender, he certainly had one of his better performances in the Manchester United badge in the last couple of games, and of course the goal. The reason why he brought Harry Maguire in the first place was to use that slab head of his to basically score goals for Manchester United. And he did that to much effect. So all I can pray and hope is that certainly with our set pieces, with the likes of Bruno Fernandes and Fred on them from corner or something, Harry Maguire can attack them and we can get goals, you know, from... Um, you can get goals, um, which which is uh, which which is encouraging because, frankly, we've not scored. I mean, I mean, that game against Chelsea, I think, was the first. Like, we don't usually score from crosses, but we did. But I think I can't remember the last time that we actually scored from a set piece, you know, and that was the first time in which must have felt like ages that we actually scored um, from a set piece, you know. So I hope that is the bringing in of something new because we really need to, we don't score that many goals. We don't destroy teams anymore. So we need to take advantage of the set pieces that we have and hopefully with Bruno Fernandes delivery, um, uh, giving us that extra quality, um, we can, um, we, we can go forward. So yes, Ham Maguire, new entry at number eight. Um, like I said, there's a one or two players um, that, have, that have dropped out and moved down and up. So we'll go on and we'll see. Um, Number seven. So Matic, actually, who was number eight last week, has gone up to number seven. Matic has, you know, Matic has been, Matic has been getting a lot of, he's been called status matches, been called slow, etc. But this is the thing, like with any player, like with any player, um, when you play that player, like it, with the exceptions of, I would argue, Lingard and Pereira, who play, have, have played multiple times and have been given opportunities and have still not shown, I would argue, um, you know, um, improvement or sense of improvement. Um, Matic has just been consistent. He's been consistent. And against Chelsea, um, he was solid for us. Again, if you know what Matic does, Matic judge is not a, is not a baller. He is there to basically, in my opinion, sort of protect the back two um, and allow or enable likes of Fred and Bruno Fernandes to sort of go, you know, go ahead and be more more attacking, you know, so because he's got that discipline, you know, he's not going to be on the track back, and I still think that we need a a more pacier, disciplined CDM like a Partey, for example, but for now, him playing there does allow Fred and, and Bruno Fernandes that license to, 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 to go forward more. This is also one of the reasons why I think that we that it's it's redundant to play Matic for me in a in a, in a free centre-back system, you know, um, one of the criticism I have of the Chelsea game and even the Bruges game is that we're playing this 3-1-2 system. We have so many centre-backs, yet we still concede goals, we still concede chances, we still concede opportunities. I don't think we necessarily defend better with three um, free, free centre-backs at the back. I, I, don't, I don't think we do. Um, so I think we go back to either 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 Um to me, I think you, I think we should have just a, a four one, a four one, uh, a four one two three one or whatever. Just as long as you have Matic as the as the deepest um, holding midfielder, I think that's fine. And 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 I think especially if you have got Bay in that in that centre back pairing, I, I I just don't see why we should play for the back because I think that restricts our team. I don't think that's Matic's best attribute. And I think that for me. Oh, well, that's a couple of weeks. He's, he's not had a mere of a performance. Yes, against Bruges, he wasn't at his peak. But I think that, you know, it, when you're picking Pereira and Matt and Lingard to play in the midfield with Matic, you know, what do you expect? So Matic actually goes up um, to seven um, in this week. Um, moving on. Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw actually retains his position um, at sixth place. Um, right now, as I said... I think Luke Shaw edges Brian Williams in terms of the left back department. I think that I genuinely do believe that this sort of competition between the two in terms of the alternation has, has helped possibly either giving Luke Shaw rest, but also, um, you know, allow, I think for allowing him to actually improve and, and reflect on his own circumstance and position. He does look a bit slimmer as well. Um, so it looks like he's, he's, he's fitter, you know, he's, he's, He's remained injury free, thank goodness. You know, so he's coming back into his stride. So fingers crossed, he can continue to remain injury free and continue going forward. Because I think he's he's, he's starting to, 
you know, a lot of United fans were saying, you know, sell Shaw, get rid of him. We don't need him as part of our, our, our setup. Um, but for me, I feel like Shaw is really, is really, is, is really come leaps and bounds, to be honest. He really, really has. Um, and I wouldn't, I would be, I would expect him to start against Watford tomorrow. I'm hoping, like I said, that we, we, we don't play a 3-5-2 at um, Old Trafford. I really, 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 really hope that we don't play a 3-5-2 at Old Trafford. Um, and so in that in that circumstance, um, he's, 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 he's still retaining six. He's not done anything like he's he's not done anything wrong. Let's put that, put that way to sort of bring his position um, or dro certainly drop out of the top 10, but certainly reduce his position. Um his defensive ability and his attacking ability has gotten better. I think he could do with a, a, few, a few more assists um, to his name. So, but Luke Shaw currently at number six. At number six. Um, so, who is at number five? New entry at uh, number five. Well, not new entry, but um, Br uh, Bruno Fernandes. Obviously, number five was Brandon Williams, who's obviously um, dropped out um, of the. Um, well, not dropped out. He's gone to ninth place. But basically, Bruno Fernandes is now on fifth. He was, last week, he was third. And this is not a slight Bruno Fernandes. This is just because there are a couple of players, well, one player in particular, um, that I feel, well, two players, actually, that I feel um, over their performances over the last week just should just be here and should just be in a higher, higher position. Um This is where we get into to difficult territory because the next five players have all been very, very... And I think... The next five players are, for me, the, the, the spine um, of Manchester United. This is a sort of, this is the team, next five players, that we build your team around. You know, so the other five, you know, there's still kind of room for improvement, still consorted, but these five, this is this is the core Manchester United squad. This is the team that you build uh, your, your Manchester United around. Uh, and Bruno Fernandes is definitely one of them. I mean, he, he just looks... Bruno Fernandes just looks levels above the entire team. He really, really, really does. I mean, it's it's ridiculous just how good, um, how much of a difference it makes. And just, you know, it's painful because you're like, had we signed him in the summer? Had we not bartered with money? Had we just signed the player in the summer? There's a very good chance that we'd have just basically, we'd have been top four. We'd have had no doubt we'd have been in top four comfortably, um, and probably could have just sort of maybe even forgotten about the Europa League. I don't think. <coughs> sorry, um, I don't think we would have necessarily, you know, been challenging for a title with Bruno Fernandes because I still think there's a lot of areas that we need to improve, especially our forwards. Um, but clearly, he makes a difference. I don't, I just don't. I think if we had Bruno Fernandes, we just wouldn't have this struggle that we're on now. We certainly would have been beaten, been, been beating lesser teams. I think. And maybe some of those draws have gone to wins. But anyway, on to him this week. He obviously, you know, free kick, hit the post. Exquisite. We can already tell that we've got a good set piece taker. And he obviously takes the corner to assist um, Harry Maguire. So for me, Bruno Fernandes is a G. Um, I, he will obviously start um, against Watford. I, definitely in that advanced role. You know, that midfield of Matic... Fred and, and Bruno Fernandes stays the same. McTominay, and this is interesting because McTominay, and I'll probably post a video about that later today, but McTominay, um, McTominay comes back um, to the bench, I think, uh, is what Social said. But I'm just curious, you know, where does McTominay come in, really? You know, because I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would be, and we'll talk about Fred in a second, So, but I guess what I'm saying is that um, I just wouldn't disrupt this midfield right now. And for me, McTominay isn't, a he he's a similar player like Fred. Um, I don't think he's the same as Matic in terms of that sort of CDM type of sort of. I, I just don't think he is. But anyway, um, Bruno Fernandes is a quality player. He's while he has dropped to five. This is no slight on his quality. It's just that there are two players I mean, in particular that um, just come because of their performance of the last week. Unexpected performances just just come out on, on top here. So, but Bruno Fernandes at number five. This is the guy number four, Eric Bay. I I admire defenders. Previously, it was Rashford. Obviously, Rashford was injured, so Rashford has dropped out of number um, out of the top ten. Um, Marcus Rashford, man. Um, also, Lindelof dropped out. Uh, he, he he's obviously obviously not there. Um, that was a replacement for I think Maguire. I think. Anyway, 
Eric Bailly just said he didn't play against Club Bruges, but he had an amazing game. An amazing game against um, Chelsea. Um, it was a bit rusty for the first minutes, but the fact is, and this is why I put him so high for me, is because it's just the fact that he was injured. He was out for so long. You know, like we often say with some players, oh, you know, it takes a bit of time to the fitness to get back, to do this, to do that. You know, he's just coming back. We use that excuse. Eric Bay, I don't think he's played football for first of all, United for almost a year. And he comes back into that team and he's basically like, is he basically our best centre back? You know what I mean? Like, like he comes back and you're like, this is basically our best centre back. You know, like there's no way, you know, I was saying this to a friend of mine. I was like, I would take Bailly, a fit Bailly for like 10 games of the season. Then having Phil Jones, uh, in non-injury, sorry, uh, injury free for the whole season. You give a crooked buy for me for 10 games of the season, and I would take that over Phil Jones um, for, you know, under free Jones for the whole season. He is that good. You know, um, people forget he's still young. He's still in his early 20s. I think he's maybe 23, I think. You know, so, you know, he, he gets injured, but he's still young. He's still young. Like, I, I think a lot of people, and I think this, this, is, this is a credit to buy, is that people say, should we sold? People should we go? It's like, he is young. He is so young. Like this guy isn't even. This 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 this, this is this is what I, I and this is why he's up there. It's like I don't think people get get it. Is that Bai is like Bai is not even his prime yet. Like defenders in particular. Like you like your Van Dykes and stuff like that. Because Van Dyke is now I think 27, 28, I think you know defenders for me get in their prime. Um, unlike maybe a fours and stuff like that, they probably come in their prime from. Maybe late 26, 27 peers. So 26 to 32. You know, 27 to 32. That for me is a defender's prime. You know, forwards, wingers prime. Probably earlier starting for maybe like 24 to 28. That type of sort of thing. Um, as in wingers. Um, maybe forwards a bit more. at twenty. You know, so on. So defenders have a later prime. So the fact that Bai is this good as a centre-back. At such a young age, he's only like I said, twenty three. I think, um, you know, we need to keep a hold of him. You know, there are a lot of players that are injury free. Sell him, get him. He's not useless. No, come on, we need to keep. I said I would take ten, you know, appearance of buy from not in the season um, over over a, a, a injury free Phil Jones, like because this is a guy who can improve and go from strength to strength. His ability, he's a, he's just that. There are very few players in his Manchester United side who are comfortable on the ball. Yes, he loses the ball. You know, but this is the thing that I'm not about to run to. Yet, players that are comfortable on the ball that will do things that are created that tenacity will, will often lose the ball. I'd rather a player who takes risks, who's comfortable with the ball, he wants to play out, he wants to sort of make things happen and lose the ball a few times than players, that, a lot of which we have at United, who just pass sideways, don't take risks, don't really know what they're doing, just want to keep it concerned and comfortable, don't really create anything. Bai is a creator, and he's a good... And the amount of tackles he was doing, man, I just... Oh, you know, there were at least a several last-ditch tackles that he made. You're just like, this guy puts his body on the line. So Eric Bai, man, is, is a fourth, and there's a very good chance, if he remains fit, that he's not going to drop out of this, 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 this top ten anytime soon. Um, this guy. Um, 50 million down the drain, right? 50 million down the drain. 50 million down the drain. Anthony Martial um, has been getting a lot of haters, uh, and I'm, I'm, I must be honest. I also at times joined that bandwagon. Bandwagon of you know, is Anthony Martial? Is he? Is he really? Is he really good? Is he really good enough? You know, especially with Rashford not being here. But the reality is, is that two goals, two games. You know that cross at Mang Basaka, that finish for that header, boom! Anthony Martial, man, you know. You know, that, that 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 gave us the momentum in that Chelsea game. That goal by Anthony Martial really, really gave us the momentum in that game. Um, and then to basically create... Because in that Club Bruges game, we didn't create anything at all. We didn't create anything at all. Martial created that goal by himself. Um, and got us that away goal, frankly, which we needed. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot of Martial haters need to sit down. Um, take the humble pie. Um, we will see what he does tomorrow against Watford, of course. 
um, at home because we need him to cr create things. And but this is the thing, and you know, and, and I noticed when Agallo came on is that it's not that these players are bad. You know, Egalo and, and, and Marshall are going to get a lot of criticism because they're not putting the ball in the back of it. They're not doing more to create on transit. And yes, as a striker squad, you need to create more. But, you know, they also need to, they also need chances delivered to them. They, they, need, they need players around that can help them to create. And the difference, you, you know, you could see in the Club Bruges game in particular is that we didn't have any pace in the field and we didn't have any creativity. And... Pereira and Lingard in particular are not are, are not creative players. They don't create much, much anymore. Um, Bruno Fernandes does. Um, Fred can be better at it, I confess. That's not really what he does, though. Um, wan bissaka has been crossing a lot more set pieces uh, across it now, so that should hopefully give Martial more opportunities, Shaw and so on. So we need to create more opportunities for Martial, is what I'm saying, because, you know, Martial is more... <coughs> Sorry, I think Martial is actually one of the mo most clinical strikers in the Premier League. He doesn't score a lot of goals, but he only needs a few. Because he's feeding on scraps, he only needs a few opportunities to score. So, Ansi Martial, for me, is a new number three uh, in replacement of Bruno Fernandes. Um, number two, Aaron wan -Bissaka. He retains his second spot because Aaron wan -Bissaka continues to be Mr. Titanium, continues to be... Very, very consistent. Um, I just don't know whether he's going to drop. He might he might go to maybe three or something. I don't know, depending on how well Bay does, maybe. Or, or obviously, Bruno Fernandes. You know, it's it's just difficult to tell. But, um, you know, Al Wambasaka is just... The main thing that he's just... He just remains fit, really. Um, as difficult as it is. But he just... His defensive qualities. He got, obviously, the assist... And for all those people that say, oh, Aaron wan is poor going forward, he can't assist. You know, what did Trent do? You know, what did Trent... Oh, Trent is a, is a better going forward, but to be honest, in recent games, especially against, um, you know, I think Liverpool just just got that 1-0 um, in the last Premier League game. And obviously lost against Atletico Madrid. And Trent, and even Robertson for that matter, just seem to be absent in both of those games, really. You know, their, their threats were just, were just nullified. Um, so, for me, over the last week, I'd certainly say that wan has played better than Trent, certainly from a defensive point of view, um, and going forward, point of view, because he's putting in the crosses, because he was, he, he's, he's got an assist, um, I think people need to not, uh, a lot of people cussing wan a lot of rival fans in particular, and I think they need to sit down. Um, I certainly think this is a guy, he's playing on something and he's, he's, he, he needs to be in contention for going to the Euros. You've got Walker, wan and um, Arnold, you can't take all three of them. Um, for me, from a defensive point of view, you've got to take Wan Bissaka. You know, Carl Walker and and Trent are uh, Trent are very good going forward, but Wan Bissaka is the better defender. Wan Bissaka has to go to the Euros for England, in my in my opinion, because yes, if you want to go all out against a team and attack, fine. But if you want to defend, if you want to see a game out, if you want to have that stability. You've got to have Wambasak, and he's getting better going forward. So for me, he goes, and this is why he's he's number two at Manchester United. But number one, and he retains number one spot, is Fred. Fred the Red. Um, Fred, I feel, you know, this is this. It's, it's it's like I was saying before about the idea of how can 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 Fred be dropped? Can can Fred be dropped because McTominay's back, and before Fred was on this run. He was alternating between McTominay and, and and they were in and out of the team. I just can't see how Solskjaer, aside, uh, sorry, <coughs> aside from resting Fred, so for example, if we're ahead, if we won the game by a few goals, take Fred off, bring McTominay on, that's fine. Or um, Europa League or stuff like that, fine. McTominay's good in terms of thinking about giving Fred rest, but if it's talking about replacing Fred in terms of big games and stuff like that... Um, I just don't think that's a good idea. You know, I the more I see it, the more I think that, you know, the midfield three we have now, Matic, Fred and Bruno Fernandes, is, 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 should be our starting midfield. Um, you, I don't think you can play Matic, Fred and McTominay together. I don't think that works. Um, and I don't think that you can play um, McTominay, Fred and um, 
Bruno Fernandes. You can, at best, probably you can probably do that, um, especially because we need to get Matic to invest as well because of, because of where he is. Um, but I just think Matic does a, di- a different role than McTominay would do, and it's more disciplined in that CDM role than, 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 than a McTominay is, where they both... I thought McTominay and Fred are both the same sort of type of player, um, although McTominay, I think, has a, has a, has a better goal threat... Um, but in terms of the engine of a midfield, I think Fred and his tenacity, um, box to box, is better that that way. Um, he's really a couple of percent bound. He's probably been our most improved player over over the t- entire season. And I think it's between him and Wan Bissaka for potentially player of the season. Although you know, late shout outs at Marshall and Bay, depending on what happens for the rest of the season. Um, so right now for me, Fred is still number one in our top ten Manchester United player list. So. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you for, for listening. Um, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Student Force on Twitter at WeAreUnitedX. Smash the notification button to get the latest Manchester United news, updates, and videos from this channel. Let me know if you agree, if you agree with this top 10, if you think there are any players that should actually be included in, or do you think any players that are rated too highly or, or lowly. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be very, very interested to see what you guys think. Like I said, this is a pre-recorded video. This is not live. Um, but I will be coming to you live with a few videos uh, in the coming future. Have a nice day, guys, and cheers.